Sabah everybody and welcome back to the channel. Android 12 Beta 1 is finally officially available as of basically yesterday, the first day of Google I.O. 2021. What we see here essentially is some changes from the developer preview, so from the other videos that I've covered for you guys here on the channel. Today we're going to talk specifically about Team Pixel because this actually is the only series of devices that's receiving the beta. All of the other announcements that were made yesterday from the other manufacturers are technically developer previews and I do have some warnings about that. This is TK and this is all of the new features of Android 12 Beta 1. Like and subscribe, of course, and make sure you hit that bell icon so that you're always notified to whenever we have new videos on the channel. Now, at the same time as Google announcing the Beta 1 availability for Pixel smartphones, so I'll give you guys, of course, a link to that to make sure to be able to download it uh, or at least sign up for the Beta if you're thinking about trying out the Beta on your Pixel smartphone. It is Beta 1. We are no longer in the developer preview when it comes down to Pixel smartphones. When it comes down to the other carriers or the other manufacturers, realistically, uh, so this is basically a Xiaomi and Oppo and a OnePlus, uh, both or all of them, as well as some of the other companies announced betas or early access to their initial release of Android 12. And I do want to mention specifically there that these are actually initial releases. So for the most part, they're technically a developer preview of what the Pixel line of devices has been using for some time. So this is initially going to be like just them being able to boot it up for the first time and with bare minimum requirements. And most of the time, not everything is going to be working. And it's actually intended for developers. So my warning to everybody considering or looking at installing an Android 12 build on their smartphone, if this is your daily driver, if this is a smartphone that you're going to be using on a daily and of course sending receiving calls, doing everything, you want to make sure that your applications work correctly. Currently the only system, the only smartphones that are intended to actually use Android at 12 as actually a functioning version would be Android 12 the uh, beta one on Pixel smartphones. Now, keeping in mind that this is not a perfect implementation, this is obviously not the final product, that's gonna happen later on in September. So if you're looking at right now what's available and what should you try, Pixel smartphones are about the only ones that I would recommend you trying. You do need to sign up to that link in the description below to be able to actually sign up your device into the beta. And once you do that, you will receive an, uh, basically an OTA update. Make sure that your smartphone is actually updated to the latest version security patch update on the smartphone before you go through all of that. Your data will migrate from your existing phone directly into the Android beta. Although if you do want to revert back for any reason, uh, that's going to be a little bit trickier. So make sure that you're considering going into Android 12 for the long haul so that way you can try it out. As far as when it comes to OnePlus, Oppo, and Xiaomi, right now the initial releases, at least for OnePlus, the build is not certified to work on US models. They're actually having some problems with that. Um, Oppo also released their own version of the developer preview, but only available for specific models of the Find X3 Pro, and unfortunately my model was not part of that list. Xiaomi did also release one uh, available directly for the Xiaomi Mi 11, but keep in mind there is some issues going on. And the target user for these builds are primarily developers, not really consumers. So you're going to find a lot of problems, and essentially like certain things that are not working, like fingerprint sensors not working, face unlock, certain functional things, applications crashing. Again, not intended for daily use. Now, what I like about this beta is that it's actually available for quite a few devices. Now, I've been running the alpha or the developer preview directly on my Pixel 4a, and it's very simple. Uh, as of the announcement yesterday, I waited a little bit, and the update came through as an OTA, and I'm now running the Android beta. So the beta is installed and running directly on my Pixel 4a. The reason why we have the Pixel 5 is because I actually wanted to run the Pixel 5 and show you guys a comparison of what Android 11 and Android 12 is showing. I've done a video similar to this, but now with the beta, we actually have a lot more aesthetical differences than what we had with the developer preview, specifically when it comes down to the UI, which what they're actually kind of calling now Material U. So short answer is it's not it's Material UI, not Material UX, Material U, Y-O-U, intended to kind of go around a major overhaul from the overall aesthetics. And what I mean by this, the first thing you'll notice if we bring down the notification panel, you'll notice right away, there's a very big difference in the way Android is running. Now, keep in mind, this may not be the way this is going to run on most smartphones that run an Android skin, specifically when we're talking about basically Oppo, OnePlus, or even Xiaomi devices. They install a custom skin over Android, which allows them to actually make their smartphones look unique. So that's what we call Oxygen OS, Color OS, uh, or even basically MIUI. So those are things that are made on top of Android but at least in its purest form on Pixel smartphones, so like the Pixel 5, the Pixel 4a, Android will be running in this format, and this is the intended vision that Google wants to go with. Uh, and I'm talking specifically about the toggles, the way they interact. The settings button is now present right here, which is what we've seen it before, but the edit button kind of moved a little bit. And then, of course, the Android version here, which says Android S, which is the code name for Android 12. 
Uh, we have notifications, toggles, the notification slider states at the top, but you can notice the animation difference is different now. The ability of actually going through, adding different buttons. And you'll notice there's a couple of new toggles here that we haven't had in Android before. That's the ability to actually disable the microphone and the camera system-wide, which means if I touch this option, this will automatically give me a nice little notification in my notification panel. But at this point, no camera or application can actually use the camera. You'll notice right there it says turn on because it does not have access to it. Conversely, it's the exact same situation if I go in there and turn on microphone mute. And that enables me to actually have a little bit more control over security. If you've ever worried if your smartphone's recording or listening or anything with the camera, this is going to be that. And then once you unlock your smartphone, you're going back home. And now obviously the fingerprint sensor still works. You still have the ability of accessing it all of that stays the same but the actual notifications themselves changed a little bit i can actually snooze a notification come back to it i can go into it undo and then of course now we have the ability of actually swiping away without getting that notification if i swipe here you notice there's a little bit of a settings tab that no is no longer there i can actually do a half swipe it goes away or I can actually press on it and then I can actually still go into the settings tab part of it, customize the experience here for this, basically your interest, go back. And of course I can go in there and actually snooze it or do the same thing or fewer like this or same thing. So I'll go ahead and snooze it, it'll come back and I can actually close it. The other thing, of course, I can actually interact with things and go in there. So here it is, we can jump in, cat.1, this is just part of the Easter eggs that are built in. So that's one of the first things. The other thing we'll probably notice right away is the ability of seeing how the widget picker is actually set now. It's a little bit different, it's more organized, it's categorized in sections that you're able to interact with. And of course, you're able to add them directly. And as you saw with the announcement yesterday, there's a lot of new widgets that are gonna be added into the UI element. So overall, you can actually kind of search in them as well, see what you want. And when you're done, you can just swipe it down and go home. Uh, conversely, you can do the same thing here. Now, the other option as well is, and unfortunately that one is actually not activated right now, is that custom theming that they were talking about is the ability of matching the background of the image that you're looking at. So an example would be here, I have a green color customized in here in the wallpaper. I went under styles and I created my own under TK Bay. There's the standard default one. You can customize and create your own and you can add the different one. Uh, you can even customize the existing one to change the colors. An example here, um, I have green color as part of the option right now. I can go into the settings tab go next, uh, change the icon shape, go blue or even go purple. I'll go ahead and say next, keep the shape and I'll keep the name same again, same as apply. I'll give it a second and you'll notice the purple color and it actually permeates throughout the text as well. So those are some of the things you're able to do and once they activate it, we'll be able to actually get the style, the actual notification panel changing ever so uh, slightly with the hue of the actual images that we have in here. Uh, so that's part of the options that we've seen here. The other thing that we definitely will notice right away, once we bring up all notification, we go into the settings, is the entirely revamped settings tab. And the main thing that we saw here is with the developer preview, we needed to activate this feature. Now it's actually active on by default. Uh, the new custom UI elements here that we have that are more friendly to one-handed mode, you'll notice there's more of an opening. So when we go network settings, everything is pushed up to the top. Here, it actually kind of ever so slightly lower, which enables us to actually have a slightly bigger UI. Now, I can also bring down the notification or the actual UI element uh, just to be able to be more one-handed. And that's something that is also very nice. So just the ability of swiping down here, right around the gestures, just bring it down a little bit and it becomes way more one-handed friendly. And of course, I can just go ahead and bring it back and we're accessing it. Uh, the other option they also added in here as well is the safety and emergency. That information tab is also present. We're able to customize this information. Uh, you're also able to go in directly into the system setting here and then find the safety tab that takes you straight into accessing the information and customizing it in there. As you can see, it still says Android 11, but again, this is still the uh, beta. So once they're ready, they'll be replacing this with obviously an Android 12 uh, Easter egg. So the last feature I wanna talk about is the stretch part of the UI. And what I mean by this, you'll notice as I'm swiping up and down, there's a little bit of a bounce, almost like a stretching effect. And that's something that we did not have here. So you notice right there, it does not actually show up uh, in the system element. And that's part of the UI element that also permeates within the settings tab. So if I jump in here, same thing, bounces up and down. And that's one of the things that we have. Uh, the other element that we also have in here that's a little bit harder to show unless we're showing it in a darker theme, uh, and that's the ability of turning on a little bit. Of, there's like a, a small effect of sparkle effect sitting here whenever we have a press and hold on an item. And I'll show that to you guys in a second. Uh, but the other options, of course, that I really like is the ability of turning on mute microphone and, of course, block camera um, on the entire system UI. As I mentioned, if I turn this on and I try to access the camera app, it's not going to work. It's going to ask me to turn it on. And if I turn it on by default, at this point, it disables this toggle that we added in there. 
We can do the same thing for microphone and camera and know exactly that no app, no system function is utilizing either the microphone or the camera at any time. And I really hope that this feature does carry over to uh, other OEM versions of Android 12. Now let's go ahead and turn on the dark theme and that just it permeates again throughout the entire system. The main thing that I definitely want to share with you guys is when we jump into the settings tab, you'll notice that now when I press and hold a little bit, there's more of that visible uh, effect of sparkle is a little bit more permeating. You can see it there. Release gets me access directly into the system setting. Um, all of the options in there, that bounce effect is still there. The ability of actually swiping in and bringing in one-handed UI element is very, very easy, very simple, and of course works throughout the UI. Uh, that new section of uh, styles and wallpapers again you can customize the entire effect and as you saw there as i was selecting it let's go ahead and look at it one more time you see the actual effect ever so slightly i'll do that one more time in slow motion so the effect of the sparkle is really right nicely there if i want to be able to customize it i can go in there change the ui element and in the future they're going to be bringing in that feature that i showed you guys with the developer preview function uh, where it actually runs a theme that matches the background that you're using that one has not been turned on and the new, new ui element for the widgets also hasn't been turned on we now currently only have the the new ui element for picker but none of the new ui or the new widgets are available yet the last thing i did want to share with you guys is there's actually a hidden function so let's go ahead and go into the power menu as you notice here with the Easter egg, once you activate it by going into the Android 11 section, or it's actually an Android 12, and it'll actually show up in here, uh, you're able to actually turn on this function and play around with little cat functions. Once you do these two, it adds a nice little uh, toggle at the top. Bubble is also still available here. So on top of snoozing, the ability of actually uh, put closing and opening it up, uh, pressing and holding and going into the settings for it, all of those things are still pretty much there. But now we also have the ability of jumping straight into a bubble function. And that's very nice. Again, for apps that support it, that's the best way to interact with it. And if you're done with it, you can actually ac access it. And you'll notice right next to that little kitty is the Android 11 Easter egg, although technically this is Android 12. And lastly, if you don't have any notifications, your clock and time and date and all of the percentage on the battery changes to this format. And of course, you're able to unlock, swipe away, and of course, get access to the system. The overall experience that we're getting right now, it's more stable than it was before, although I will say that the developer preview was definitely very daily driver ready. Um, I would probably say if you're looking or if you've ever been curious about using Android 12, this is actually going to be the best time to do it because the beta actually does not allow, uh, does not delete any of your data because it comes over as an OTA. That's one thing that's different than when we were doing the developer preview because at that point we needed to actually unlock our smartphone, you know, unlocking the bootloader and then side loading the initial uh, developer preview and then from there on OTAs will come through. So for that purpose alone, if you're thinking about installing Android 12 beta, uh, beta 1, it is definitely something you can try. Just keep in mind that reversing that process is not as simple as updating to it. So if you're going with it, you may as well go for the long haul, meaning wait till it basically uh, go through till it becomes fully available. If you're liking it and you want to be able to play with it uh, and you're comfortable playing around and sometimes having a few crashes, then the beta one is definitely something to check out. So Android 12 beta one is definitely very nice. Uh, I was kind of surprised at some of the changes that they did because at the initial release when they did it with the developer preview, it looked like it was still showing some Android. 11 pieces and they were changing certain things. Now we were able to turn on some of the hidden features in the Android 11, well the Android 12 uh, developer preview side, uh, but now we see them implemented. The new UI elements in the settings tab, the new widgets. Uh, now the theming option is not turned on yet, although I did show that in a separate video if you'd like to check that out. There'll be a link for that in the description below as well as I'll put a card for you guys here for the other hidden video that I did for Android uh, 12 developer preview. Um, the toggles for uh, the mute all as far as microphone and uh, camera are very, very nice and very functional. The Android 12 beta one, link for that will be in the description below. You do need to sign up your smartphone. It does need to be a pixel. And as far as it comes down to some of the other OEMs or the other manufacturers, I actually would recommend you guys to wait. Unless you're a developer and you really need to have access to Android 12 on these smartphones, it's gonna be a little bit bumpy and chances of actually bricking your smartphone if you don't do something correctly. So wait till they have an official fully functional beta, which they actually start asking people to sign up for. Um, OnePlus typically has them at the same time, but it seems like they had some problems with the US version. So at this point, they're waiting on the uh, US model of OnePlus 9 and the 9 Pro. Um, uh, as far as the Find X3 Pro, it wasn't available for the model that I had. It's specific in specific regions. And of course, Xiaomi also has uh, their own alpha or beta release that they're putting out. But again, right now, definitely check it out. Hope you enjoyed the video and uh, let me know in the comments below. But I would wait if you don't have a Pixel. If you really got to check it out on a Pixel, sign up your smartphone and enjoy. This is TK. Thank you very much for the support. I'll see you in the next video.